I think this is the place. Uh, Privet. Hello. You are uh, testicles? Yeah. What can I do for you? I want a bitstream. You want a bitstream? Oh, we have bitstream. What you want? X16R? X22I? Brog pal. X22I? Those don't exist yet. <laughs> he does not know. You are a funny, funny guy. Seriously, what can we get for you? I want the algo for reef coin. Otlishna. Bulleti chishla. So, you got cash? I have Bitcoin. This is useless money. Why do you think cloud mining exists? Fair enough. I have cash. Here you go. Thanks. Otlishna, we are good here. If I were you, I would get started right away. This good maybe for only two weeks. Two weeks? This just came out. Just came out? Maybe for you, not for us. <laughs> Russia testicles. The technicals. Before that, this video brought to you by shop.thetechnicals.io. Represent your favorite coin project or just your favorite YouTuber. Link is in the description below. <laughs> oh my god, that's disgusting. Please stop. Curacao ain't got shit on me. What is up guys, Technicals here, coming at you with something a little bit different today. I wanted to just talk to you guys a little bit about the dark underbelly of the FPGA world. Now, this is a new and emerging space. Yes, I know FPGAs have been around for some time, but we've seen a resurgence here over the past few months of FPGA miners coming online, new bit streams being introduced as GPU miners and the community at large look to get around the, uh, the ASIC dominated coins. We're looking for a way to increase our power, lower our costs, and, uh, and fight the extreme hash power put forth by ASIC and large centralized farms. Now, I've maintained over the past few months that FPGAs will, in some way, take over. They're just so powerful, uh, and they can switch. They have the flexibility of a GPU with all the power and efficiency of an ASIC. The real downfall is that they are complex to operate, they're tough to, uh, to get running, and they're expensive. They're prohibitively expensive right now, although we've seen over the past uh, month or so uh, new miners coming out into the market, such as the Black Miner F1, which offer a, uh, a competitive edge in terms of hashing power and performance at a uh, somewhat reasonable price point of about $2,500. We've also seen some other miners coming out, which remains to be seen if those actually uh, come to fruition. But if they do, then it represents a great shot for sort of the everyday, not the hobbyist miner, but the uh, enthusiast, semi-professional miner that doesn't have a large operation to stand a chance at uh, turning some profits. But this is where the fairy tale takes a dark turn. Over the past few months, I've received contacts from various people about promoting their product, their new miner that's coming out, so on and so forth. And while most of them are somewhat flimsy or they're at an early stage of development, not re yet ready to advertise, uh, over this past week, I've gotten two contacts that have sort of illuminated me just a little bit more as to possibly what's going on behind the scenes with FPGA mining. Now, if you've been following the saga, especially as it pertains to like the squirrel and minority thing, those whole those communities, if you've been paying attention to the tweets being put out by some of those people, uh, you may have caught here and there that uh, in some instances, some people saying that uh, private firms would approach them for a privately commissioned bitstream. This being a very large player coming to a developer or bitstream maker asking them to create a bitstream for their large firm that's private. They use it privately and they mine with that behind the scenes. So if that's the case then it stands to reason that that's going on to some larger degree uh, outside the uh, public eye. We know that large ASIC farms exist. We know that large GPU farms exist. Uh, but large FPGA farms, we've yet to really see those. Now, we have some idea about, say, Squirrel Research. They're currently hosting a lot of FPGAs for individual consumers. We also know that Black Miner is hosting FPGAs for their buyers as well. How large their farms are, I have no idea. I've not seen anything. 
uh, any hash results or anyone kind of narrowed down and Dick Tracy their way into finding out how much hash power they're really controlling. Uh, but then when we harken back to the uh, the rumors of Bitmain early on uh, during the whole crypto night thing, uh, at hash, Equihash, everyone was pretty well confident, and I think it was kind of a no-brainer that Bitmain was hashing to some degree on those ASICs before they released them to the public, before they even announced them to the public. Can we uh, assume the same thing is going on with FPGAs? Could it have been FPGAs that Bitmain was mining on the whole time? Because as we all know, ASICs are made from FPGAs first. They create a bitstream, they load it on an FPGA, and they use that as somewhat of a template to manufacture their ASICs. We saw not long ago Veriscoin. Veriscoin became aware that FPGAs were on its network and it was raising the difficulty very high. Veriscoin didn't like that and they did fork away. We also saw another very large, very popular coin, Darling Coin, that's not listed on coin market caps uh, accurately, so on and so forth, or so they say, um, also fork away. And so these coins don't like it when FPGAs get onto their network, but they can't really justify forking unless they know why. It could be just GPU miners as far as they know. But once they're uh, aware that FPGAs are on their network, they do fork away. So it would be in the best interests of a large player or just a group of FPGA miners to keep it quiet, to keep things private. And that's why we've seen Bitstreams coming out only be released to approved hardware owners because we all have a vested interest in keeping quiet about it because we don't want the coins to fork away. We want to retain our profits. And so if a large centralized player got onto uh, the network with a privately commissioned F uh, Bitstream, uh, then they could stay on it indefinitely while no one really knew about it and no new FPGA miners could jump onto the network and raise the difficulty. And so they could have carte blanche to be hashing away on a profitable uh, algorithm, profitable coin for many months at a time, reaping the benefits. To illustrate this, this is one of the first videos that I ever looked up when I got into mining over a year ago. This is a, a video about an individual who was setting up a what I thought to be a very large farm at the time of 80 1080 Ti's. Now I don't have 80 1080 Ti's but I have you know uh, like 90 something cards at this point. 80 1080 Ti's that's quite a chunk of change but it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. If you consider some of the previous content that we've done with Bitstreams comparing one VCU or BCU or VU9P based card, uh, comparable hash rates to a 1080 Ti, in many instances it's 20 to 25 1080 Ti's worth of hash power in that one card. Consider that that person's farm that had that 80 1080 Ti farm could be replaced by four or five FPGAs, depending on the algo, depending on the coin, uh, depending on you know that stage of development, what have you. Think about that. Imagine that. Imagine 80 1080 Ti's reduced down to one single solitary rig. That's incredible. Now consider 80 FPGAs and the kind of power that that could generate. Consider that with in increases in development, increases in efficiency, then you can get an FPGA up to the performance of an ASIC that's maybe one generation uh, uh, previous to this, and who knows what is going to be uh, down the road, very shortly down the road, or already in service. It's already being used now. We just don't know. There's a dark underbelly here. I'm not putting on my tinfoil hat because this isn't conspiracy as far as I'm concerned. This is fact. Here's a, a table which I've blurred out all the relevant info from, um, but these are algorithms on this table that I've I've promised to be quiet about because I'd like to continue to get more information and release it as it sort of benefits you guys and benefits me. Um, these are algorithms that are not supposed to have uh, ASICs or FPGAs on their network. These are algorithms that are not only targeted, that the bit streams are in the late stage of development. And these aren't the ones off Zethron's site. This is something brand new. Now, is this all Fugazi? Is it all uh, fluff? I, I don't know. It's very interesting and very harrowing to see these types of figures come out about algorithms that are ASIC resistant, FPGA resistant, quantum resistant. And uh, in a matter of weeks or maybe months, they're already in a late stage development on the bitstream. And this is just the stuff that's being publicly been been made public. Can you imagine what is going on behind the scenes? You got to start thinking about these kind of things and whether or not th that has a bearing on your uh, on your plans to continue mining in the future. I'm not here to discourage anyone away from cryptocurrency mining. I'm a, basically a mining channel despite my efforts to branch out doesn't really work. Uh, but you know, this is new information coming about, and it would be dumb 
for you to put your hands over your eyes and ears and say, oh, it's not, it's not happening, it's not happening. Yeah, GPU mining will go back to exactly what it was in December of 2017. Uh, this is important information for you to know, and it's uh, harrowing to me because I've got you know, a sizable operation. I do think we'll return to a stage where it's uh, profitable to at least sell the hardware or you know, it will offer some sort of option in the future for us to exit should we want to do that. The future is uncertain, uh, especially with cryptocurrency. Things change all the time, but it was very, very interesting to see this kind of stuff. In the beginning of my FPGA journey, so it's funny to think about early on how I thought it was all sunshine and puppy dog tales that anyone would want to volunteer <laughs> bit streams to me for me to release out to the public because surely that's what everybody wants to happen, right? Uh, it couldn't be further from the truth. No one wants these things to be made public. And um, the only way that you're really going to get that hard info is to get a FPGA yourself. It's a boys club, and I don't know if that's ever going to change because the people who are going to spend four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 on a piece of hardware for mining, they want to make damn sure that they get a return on their investment, that they at least break even on that thing. And you're not going to do that by advertising out to the public what the information is, what kind of hash rates you're getting, what algorithm you're on, and uh, potentially you know upset the apple cart and have that coin fork away. But you guys need to know, nonetheless, this kind of stuff is going on. So probably the biggest piece of advice that I can give you is to make sure that you do subscribe to the Technicals YouTube channel, leave a like on the video. It does help me grow. Turn on notifications because that's important too. Don't forget to check out shop.thetechnicals.io. Support your favorite YouTuber or just buy a shirt that you like. I don't know. Here's some shirts. Look at those. Those are cool, right? And come over into our Discord. We've got an FPGA discussion channel in there. If you want to get up-to-date FPGA info or just join the chatter uh, over in our Discord, hit the link in the description below. I'm the Technicals. Das Vedanya.